Well, welcome everyone to GLOMCON. We're excited today to have our joint session with the ERA. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Kate Stevens to introduce today's topic. And before I do that, I just want to say uh, that the, as the year ends, thank you to Kate for this wonderful partnership and all the work she's done to put together um, these uh, joint sessions with the ERA. We've really enjoyed having her uh, as a part of GLOMCON. Hello to everyone. Uh, I would like to thank the organization for inviting me to give this talk, and especially I would like to thank Hobson, the Spanish Young Nephrologist Platform, for inviting me also. Well, as you know, diabetes is a hidden epidemic. In 2012, 12% of user population was diabetic. And in 2040, more than 600 million people will present diabetes worldwide. 40% of patients with diabetes develop diabetes kidney disease. Diabetes kidney disease is a clinical diagnosis based on the presence of chronic kidney disease as a consequence of diabetes and defined by GFR below 60 and or urine albumin creatinine ratio above 30. However, when ser series of kidney biopsies of patients with diabetes are analyzed, only one third of patients presented diabetic nephropathy. That is a clinical, that is, sorry, a histological diagnosis. And two thirds presented non-diabetic kidney disease alone or together with diabetic nephropathy. The study of renal biopsies in diabetic patients is biased because biopsy is usually performed when non-diabetic renal disease is clinically suspected. In diabetic nephropathy, the thickening of the glomerular basement membrane with or without mesangial expansion is the gold standard for diagnosis. This lesion can be observed even in the absence of albuminuria. In early stages, nodular lesions and mesangiolysis are also present. As long as the disease progresses, exudative, le sorry, exudative lesions appear driving finally to glomerular sclerosis. But glomerular lesions are not the only lesions present in diabetic nephropathy. Different degrees of tubal interstitial damage are observed. Interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy are associated to worse renal function. Also, vascular injury is present as arterial, arteriolar hyalinosis and intimal thickening. The role of polar vasculosis is interesting. More efferent arterioles are present as a compensatory response to glomerular hyperpressure. The presence of this new vasculature could be a sign of good prognosis in diabetic nephropathy. The, the Renal Pathology Society system for classification of diabetic, of diabetic nephropathy lesions was published in 2010. It is the first unified system for staging diabetic nephropathy and it's simple and easy to reproduce. It's based, based on glomerular basement membrane thickening and mesangium expansion. However, it is quite incomplete in not capturing tubal interstitial and vascular changes that are known to have pronostic value. The authors proposed in the same paper a classification for tubal interstitial and vascular lesions but it's not as famous and as commonly used as the glomerular one. As you can see in this graphic, some structural uh, findings in diabetic nef nephropathy are the same that define nephrosclerosis. The glomerular ischemia and final sclerosis, IFTA and interstitial inflammation, inflammation and vascular lesions. These two entities, diabetic nephropathy and nephrosclerosis, are diagnosed together in many cases and are very difficult to distinguish sometimes. One of the most significant issues in diabetic nephropathy is the different progression in kidney function decline between patients. The differences between rapid decliners and those with a slower progression are not fully understood. In this article, the authors analyzed 600 patients with biopsy-proving diabetic nephropathy. They classified them according to Cadigo stages in green and yellow, orange and red colors. 
the composite renal outcome is dialysis, reduction of GFR by half, or doubling serum creatinine. The authors observed that the presence of glomerular structural, structural lesions, such as nodular or exudative ones, or mesangiolysis, were related to achieving the renal outcome. That was especially evident in the green-yellow categories. <laughs>